Of all the counties in Ireland, County Armagh is one of the most ancient and historic, and one of the most fertile. The north of the county is famous for its orchards, and the rest of the county has some of the best land, rich in agricultural produce, which has fed people for generations. Over the years, this area, like all of Ireland, has witnessed a growth in modern farming, leaving behind the old ways. However, it was these old techniques of farming which brought communities together and were the threads that kept rural society alive. Between the villages of Bessbrook and Mount Norris is the townland of Enna, and it's here that you will find the home of Colum Ferris. Over the past four years, Colum has sown out two acres of corn and has organised a charity event based on the old skills of agriculture, using vintage vehicles to harvest the crop. The two acres of corn, which will be binded and stooked, was a marvellous sight for anyone passing along the road, the golden sheaves blowing in the summer breeze. Before the binding of the corn begins, it's necessary to open the field. To do this, a forge and super dextra and a cutting bar is used. Now opening the field means that you go around the field twice. The super dextra used dates from 1963 and the cutting bar from 1958 when it cost a sum of one pounds. Local neighbour David McElroy drives the tractor while Colin Ferris himself pushes the corn back in what is known locally as shaving the corn. The autumn days are here again and the night winds still they blow the woodlands turn to golden hues and the harvest moons glow. To hear again of days long past to come no more I know. When I'm old, hot Murphy's meadow in the sunny long ago. Those days are but a memory like the snow of yesteryear And when evening shades are falling all alone I'll shed a tear On my cheek I feel the soft touch of the winds that whispered low When I'm old Pat Murphy's meadow in the sunny dawn In the sunny long ago As the corn around the sides of the field is cut Neighbours and friends begin to tie up the sheaves So that the binder will be able to start its work It's certainly a good crop of corn This field itself was originally ploughed on the 10th of October and corn sown on the 15th of November. Now it's the first week of August and it's about to be cut. McCormick International Binder from the 1950s pulled by McCormick International 523 from 1967 and owned by local man Jerry Savage who puts in a lot of work into the day. When the binder reaches the field, the road wheels are taken off and the draw bar has to be put into a cutting position. To do this, it is necessary to take the draw bar out and turn it around.
Gerald Savage reverses the tractor into position. The binder is lifted up to hitch it to the tractor. The wooden dry shaft is fitted to the binder and while this is happening, Jim Ferris, one of Colm's sons, fits part of the reel back on. Gerald then adjusts the cutting height of the binder to cut quite low so that there will be more straw. The higher you cut, the less straw there is. With this part of the operation complete, it's time to get going on the binder, with David McElroy driving and Gerald operating the binder. After a couple of swords are cut, they are followed on by many eager hands, waiting to stoop the corn. There's one fair county in Ireland With memories so glorious and grand Where nature has lavished its bounty It's the orchard of Erin's Greenland I love its cathedral and city Once founded by Patrick so true And it bears in the heart of its bosom The ashes of Brian the Rue It's my own Irish home Far across the foam Although I've often left it In foreign lands to roam No matter Traveled a part of the county through Newtown for Hill Cross McGlen, around by the gap of Mount Norris, and home by Blackwater again, where the girls are so gay and so hearty, none fairer in Erin go bra. Ah, but where are the boys that? Like the boys from the county Armagh It's my own Irish home Far across the foam Although I've often left it In foreign lands to roam No matter At home in old Ireland in the county of Armagh. The McCormick tractor used here was bought when it was one year old for the price of eight hundred pounds. It wouldn't buy much today. Binder was bought in 2001 for £50 and restored by Jerry McKernan, who made a new reel and drawbar for the binder. Later on, Andrew Ferris takes over the driving. As on a day like this, everyone wanted to experience the magic of the older machinery. As the tractor and binder cut, we were beginning to get a little sore for the dozen or so neighbours of all ages who had turned out to help. In the past, it wouldn't be as normal to have as many helpers, but no one was complaining, as it helped keep down the workload.
the field would be stooked with four sheaves to every stook, and they would stand in the field for up to two weeks, depending on the weather, before they would be hutted. It was a good crop of corn, and the sight of the sheaves in the field would take all back to the days of their youth, when this would not only be a common sight in Armagh, but all over Ireland, while for the young it gave them a chance to experience something new. Long gone are the days of big families and friends When the school bus was filled with one stop round the bends And soap didn't clean out your mouth but your hands And the older and wiser was king of the land A chore from your mother came straight from the heart a brother and sister couldn't be kept apart And do you remember what father's goals? Scarce were the places where you stuck your nose Where your work was as true as the light from the sun And your neighbour would tell you to get something done but now there's no time for the symbol of old Long gone are the days, oh how I miss them so Dad's dad carried mail on an old rugged course through wind, sleet and hail on a beautiful horse his children and wife kept the gardens with care till he died and left them a big cross to bear I recall being told something said to my nan this family can't last send them off while you can but she told her mom with a steel fiery slip I'll stay on my course or go down with my ship Where your word was as true as the light from the sun And your neighbour would tell you to get something done But now there's no time for this symbol of hope Long gone are the days, oh how I miss them so Life was so carefree, though harder and tough When a kind word was won, your day was enough Today's friends are TVs, computers and so Long gone are the days, oh how Big day, of course, was the thrashing day, and the 20th of September was the day chosen for the event. This day would enable the organisers to make a good collection for the Newry Hospice, and hopes were high that it would stay dry, and that a plentiful crowd of participants and spectators would attend. The threshing mill was a 1947 Garvey made in Aberdeen in Scotland, owned and supplied for the day by Charlie Rice. The baler used was a McCormick International B46 from the 1960s owned by John Connolly. Powering the baler would be Gerald Savage's McCormick International. Driving the mill was a 1943 Fortune owned by local man Raymond McCormick. 
This whole outfitted work would create quite a spectacle, with both machinery and men doing their bit. Forking up the corn was Patrick Ferris, while on the thresher cutting the straps was Ruman McCormick, owner of the Ford Centre. Feeding the mill was Charlie Rice, its owner, and with men and machinery working in tandem, the day got off to a good start. As I walk down the road on this fine autumn morn, I can see the great combine collecting corn. And my mind wanders back in a moment of joy To the day of the thrasher when I was a boy All over the valley you could hear the strange sound Of that mighty machine on its sign you will run All the men in the townland would follow at will And they'd all lend a hand with the old thrashing mill So boy, up the big Little butter between For eight empty bellies Will soon need a fill For it makes a man hungry The old fashioned There were two on the thrasher And two on the stack And the man with the fork Kept the straw flying back There were bottles of porter And plenty of bikes And our Larry Andy Looked after the bikes Then a few of the boys Built the straw in a reek While the young ones at home Played hide and go see And myself and my brother Were the dogs and the cats At the time of our lives Chasing after the rats Times are a changing and nothing stands still. Larry Andy is gone like his old thrashing mill. And the most of the workers I knew as a child have reaped the great harvest for which they have toiled. No more in the valley we will hear that machine, for just like the corn crake is gone from the sea. But it makes me feel sad as I dream of it still. I love the dear sound of the old thrashing mill. So boil up the bacon and cabbage just cream. Have plenty of spots of butter between. For eight empty bellies will soon need a fill. For it makes a man hungry, the old thrashing mill. For eight empty bellies will soon need a fill. For it makes a man hungry. The huts were brought to the thresher by tractor and cart. Andrew Ferris carted huts in using the Fords and Dextra. Meanwhile, David McElroy used his own 1942 Fordson to ferry other corn in. The hay cart used by Davy is an interesting one, as it was made in one day. With the basic essentials, the cart was started on the 19th of September, worked at during the day and through the night, and was ready for the charity event held the next day. Now, that sounds an excellent achievement, and the cart, well made, is still in perfect working order for today's event. To get a hut of corn on a cart, the trailer is tipped up. Wire rope from the winch is attached to the strap and the strap put around the hut of corn.
It is then winched on. In all, a five minute job. With the hut in place, all is carted over to the threshing outfit. Another way to winch a hut on is to put a chain around the hut and then winch it on the cart using a handle winch. Working together, the two men winch the hut on. And as the hut goes on, the cart levels up. The lock-in pin is then put in to keep it in position. Throughout the afternoon, men changed over jobs to get a full feel of what a threshing day was like. Cutting the straps now is Geoffrey Hamilton, a supporter of the day's event. Feeding the corn in is another local man, Harry Farmer. This thresher is a three foot thresher and all corn is placed head first into the mill. Pitching the corn up to the men on the thresher is another local enthusiast, Terry Matthews. At the back of the baler, the wind had been blowing out loose straw, and baler owner John Connolly had a busy time forking it up. Working at the back of the thresher, bagging corn and tying the bags, was Wallace Crean. It had been a good crop of corn, and out of the two acres, more than 90 bags of corn were bagged. With the corn bagged, Jimmy Rice was kept busy collecting the bales. By now everything was running smoothly and progressing well. So Colin Ferris increased the workload on the thresher as he used his massive Ferguson 65 and a buck rake to carry in even more huts. Sit back and watch from the ease of an armchair the men at work as they make light work of the two acres of the corn huts. It certainly gives a different perspective on a corn harvest today. To a queen, old country cottage, today I did move. To the place I love so dearly. Just a standing by the mill Time has brushed away the traces Of love and care divine But it tells me in my memories Of those pictures in my mind Time marches on Time marches on Another day older, yes, another day gone. 
Time marches on Time marches on Memories linger But the time marches on Though the days were hard and hungry And our friends were kind and true And we always helped each other Yes, we saw each other through Time has brought its many changes Along with faces new But they'll never know each other Like the way they used to do Time marches on Time marches on Another day older Yes, another day gone Time marches on Time marches on Memories linger But the time marches on In a dream that's never ending My memories linger on I can see the smiling faces Of my friends who journeyed on From a world of disenchantment Of violence and crime You were spared the disillusion With the passing of the time Time marches on Time marches on Another day older Yes, another day gone Time marches on Time marches on Memories linger But the time marches on Memories linger But the time marches on Another feature of the day was to be the large number of vintage tractors brought along by local men to help create interest in the world of vintage machinery. The appearance of these was added to the day and the organisers were very appreciative of their attendance.
Threshing corn, bagging corn and collecting bales can leave a person hungry. So it was a welcome sight to get something to eat. Judy Ferris, Lorraine Ferris's sister, Margaret Stutt from Liverpool, had been busy organising food provisions for the day. All the donations given for the food would be used for Newry Hospice's fund, and the public were certainly generous in their donation. The tea ladies did a roaring trade all day, and it was a welcome break for many, for it's hard to beat a cup of tea and a wee bun or two. Homemade apple tart, scones and all were eagerly gobbled up, and there wasn't much left at the end of the day. <laughs> Johnny, what's it like to get tea in a hotel? There's a dribble from the tip, but there's a dribble from the jungle. Every time I try to pour me tea or milk in semi mugger, I hold it steady, but I cannot pour it out. Cause there's nothing but a dribble dribbling down along the stumps. Who makes the bloody tea pot you'll find in the hotel? You'll see them in the restaurants and in the pubs as well. They're lovely, clean and shiny. But when you pour them out, there's nothing but a dribble dribbling down along the spouse. There's a dribble from the tap, but there's a dribble from the jug. Every time I try to pour me tea or milk into me mug, I hold the tap on steady, but I cannot pour it out. Cause there's nothing but a dribble dribbling down along the spouse. Is there anyone in Ireland makes a tap at wood the spouse That doesn't dribble dribble every time you pour it out I've travelled over Ireland, north, east, south and west But the tap at that me grandad surely is the best Cause me grandad has a tap or she lives up in Drumfay It's there you'll always get a master mug of tea has a black and a smoky one, but when he pours it out, you'll never see a dribble dribbling down along his mouth. After the tea, it was back to the threshing for some, while for others it was more of a time to peruse around and have a look at the vintage models on display. One display in the field, which was absolutely fantastic, was the model display by Malachi Cowan. He lives near White Cross. These working models were handmade, designed from moving bits of tools or clocks. The detail is fantastic, and it must have taken hours, hours of hard work to create such a display. Look carefully at the detail put into this working model collection. <laughs>
While the threshing continues, it might be interesting to reflect for a moment on the history of threshing. The first impression of threshing might be that threshing is just the separation of grain from straw, and there isn't much to it. Nothing could be further from the truth. Threshing has infinitely more meaning. Ireland had just come through the famine, and as people had to produce enough food to feed them against the backdrop of an unreliable potato crop, cereals became very important to supplement relatively low-grade foods of grass and hay for animals, and of course, for human consumption. Of the cereals, oats grow best. The value of oats is in the grain, and the separation of the grain from the straw is achieved by threshing, which became the most important event in every farm household. It was done in the early days by hand flail and was very laborious. But time brings changes, and so the threshing itself was taken in hand by the inventors. There followed a progression from hand power through horse power and even water power until a viable 